What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Old Volks TV. Uh, we're going to answer some mail today. I've been getting a lot of emails about uh, carbs. Since we've been taking these trips on the bus, people have been seeing us take these long trips. They wonder how we do it so reliably. Um, they're always asking me what kind of carbs I have on my bus. Uh, currently, right now, I'm running a set of uh, dual CADs, which are the 40s. Uh, I got those on my little 1600 stock motor. Um, I've also run in the past little baby Webers and I've run big boy Webers. Uh, I, I just love dual carbs. You know, they're, to me it's easy to, to get them set up and sync. You get a little bit better performance. You get a little bit better fuel economy, which a lot of people don't really realize. Uh, but you can get better fuel economy even with these big ones if you know how to drive them. Um, and part of that is comes from the tuning. So today we're going to show you how to tune the little ICT 34s. We're going to show you how to tune some IDFs and then uh, we'll get into the bus and I'll tune my caddies. Uh, we'll show you actually how to do those on a running motor. So I've got a couple of these set up out in the shop uh, on a motor so we can get some close-ups and hopefully you'll learn something. So come on, let's go out to the shop. Okay, so what we got here um, this would be the driver's side carb, so you're looking at it obviously from the back of the car. Um, there's really only two screws that you need to pay attention to when you're tuning. You got your air mixture screw and then you got your idle set screw. Um, the linkage would attach to this and then as you hit the gas pedal, you know, it opens up the butterfly and off you go, burning out and tearing down the street. Um, this is just a little return spring just to help that thing snap back. Um, we're going to move that out of the way so I can show you. Um, so basically what you do, you get a, a base tune going. You always have to make sure your timing is perfectly set um, before you go and you want the engine to be warmed up. In order to do that, you have what's called a base tune, I guess, for your, your carburetors here. So your idle set screw should be turned uh, it's one and a half turns from when the screw hits this little stopper. Uh, I like to use a little screwdriver. It's really hard to do this in the car, uh, especially in a bug because you just don't have access to it. So you got to get yourself a little stubby screwdriver for one side. On the other side, when you have a normal shroud, you know, the shroud's like right here, it's so hard to reach. Um, so you have to get creative to turn these screws. Um, I made a little gripper so that you can turn it with your fingers instead of a screwdriver. This is amazing. Uh, message me if you want to know about those because those have helped a ton. So anyways, here's this mechanical uh, the idle screw here and basically if you watch this part right here as we turn it right there. So we've, we've touched and then you see it moving. So that's opening the throttle more or less uh, on one side or the other and you want to always have your linkage disconnected too I forgot to say that that's very important disconnect your linkage before you try to tune the carbs uh, so right where it's touching which is right there we're gonna go one and a half one and a half turns on this one and then you would do the same on the other carb on the other side and then here you want to turn it in all the way until it just stops. Don't crank that super tight because if you crank it super tight, you're going to mess up uh, the tip. Here, I'll show you what the, the end of the idle air screw looks like. So this little guy is pretty long. There's a spring on it which helps keep the tension once it's set so that it doesn't move around on you. And you see that little point right there. You know, can you see that? You don't want to crush that into there because that goes into like a little seat and if you crush it it'll mushroom and it'll never adjust properly so and then we go from there that's a half that's one that's a half that's two two and a half turns that was like that so two and a half turns on the air screw one and a half turns on the uh, idle screw there do that to both sides the engine should fire up and idle horribly but it'll idle long enough to get hot 
once you got the engine nice and warm, you're basically going to turn this one in until the engine starts to die or stumble. You know, you can go until the engine almost dies. If it dies, you just have to back it out, start it again, and, and try again. Just until the engine starts to stumble, and then you slowly come back a quarter of a turn at a time. And then you gotta wait, you know, a few seconds in between each one because the engine's gonna react. So you want it to, uh, you know, catch up to itself. And then you go out until you get the fastest possible idle. So once it stops making any change, you kind of keep an eye on where this is. And then you're gonna go back in a half a turn from wherever that was. Then you go do the other side and you come back and you go back and you go back and you keep going back and forth. You go in until it starts to stumble. You come out to the fastest idle and then you go in a half a turn. Eventually, it'll not make much difference so you'll barely have to turn it and then you know that your your air jets are at the best lean idle um, that is the the best idle without being too lean or too rich it's it's just right once you get that done uh, then you can adjust these with your gauge um, your snail gauge or your uh, it was like a little flat one with a little floaty ball on it uh, you know floaty ball you put that in there and you dial this back until you get the same number on both sides uh, with a good clean idle so you can kind of push this in that'll open up the idle a little bit it'll break it up you can take this screw out a little bit and that'll slow the idle down and you kind of go back and forth with those and then uh, you know once you get it to where the idle is where you like it then you adjust this just a tiny bit so that that ball or that snail gauge reads the same on both and then you know your carbs are balanced. Um, these little baby Webers oftentimes have a little sort of a nipply thing on the uh, intake. That's for a balance tube. Um, clamp that off with a pair of vice grips when you're doing this part because you don't want one to affect the other as you're tuning. Once you get it tuned then you have to remember to take those vice grips off and that just balances the vacuum on each one. Uh, so it'll run smooth and it'll accelerate evenly. Um, you won't have any kind of popping. So that's it. That's how you tune the little baby Webers. Um, you know, once you get those tuned up and everything's nice and smooth, you put the linkage on, you adjust your linkage. I'm not going to show you any of that because there's like a thousand different kinds of linkages and there's so many different adjustments for them that uh, I wouldn't be able to get into it today with the time we have. So you can consult your your dealer or the internet and figure out how to adjust your linkage. I have no idea what you have, uh, too many. So let's move on to the uh, Weber Dual Throat Weber 40. Um, this is just a set of 40s that I had laying around. Um, so you basically have to treat this like two separate carburetors when you tune them, uh, two on each side, because that's basically what it is. They share a fuel bowl but they've all got their own jets and their own mixture screws and everything. This is your idle set screw. This is your, you know, your throttle. This controls the, how much air is going in there. This is your fuel pump um, for the squirters. Your fuel inlet, this is actually the driver's side carb. That's why this is pointing forward. Normally this would be pointing towards the back of the motor. Uh, but this is just so you can see, we just put it on this side. Uh, so again, you set them the same way uh, this is your idle screw, so you do this one and a half turns. As soon as it touches, so as soon as you see this thing start to go, then you go one and a half turns on this one. These down here, just the big ones, um, the little ones, you got a little tiny guy here, a little bit bigger one with a nut on it here, don't mess with those. Usually we just put those in all the way and leave them alone. Um, they're for fine tuning or vacuum, it's just stuff that we don't have. Um, so I've, I've never messed with them on any ones that I've ever tuned. Just the bigger one that's kind of got the little knobby ends on it. Um, that is your idle air mixture screw. Um, so both of these will have to be turned out two and a half turns from just touching. In a bug, good luck. <laughs> this, these things are just about impossible to reach because the side of the engine bay is here. Um, so you'll have to do what's called Weber windows, 
which is where you cut out an opening inside the wheel well. Um, I'll see if I can put a picture of that kind of right in this area so you can see what we're talking about. But you won't be able to reach these easily with your hand. You can do it. It is a super duper pain. They make a little tiny 90 degree screwdriver ratchet thing um, that I've used before, but it's, man, it super stinks. Uh, we also have these intakes, which are backwards. So they actually would turn that carburetor around so that the mixture screws sit on the other side. Um, these are called space savers and CB, uh, CB Performance has those. I'll throw a link to those down below. So in a bug, that makes life so much easier. Um, so basically, all you do is the same process as before. Take your linkage off. These don't have a balance tube, so you don't have to worry about that. Get the engine nice and warm. You know, just get it to where it'll run with those base tune settings and then uh, get it nice and warm. And then you, I always start with number one and then I do number four and then I do number two and then I do number three. And I kind of crisscross as I adjust them. Um, you can go just left side to right side. doesn't really matter. Um, I just like to kind of try and balance the motor because if you get one in tune and one is fully out of tune, the motor is going to shake and it just, it's just kind of scary and freak you out a little bit. Um, if you're not ready for it. So kind of going around side to side will help. Um, and you just sort of turn these in until it stumbles and then you kind of back it out till you get a nice high idle. And then you do the next one and then you do the next one and then you go around and around and around until it's idling smoothly. Once those are good, leave it alone. Don't touch these anymore. A lot of people want to keep adjusting these with the gauge to try and balance, you know, the individual cylinders but you don't do that that's not what those do these just correct the air this is what you use to balance one side to the other so you just use the, the rear one I guess the one closest to you you put your gauge on there and then you just dial this in or out a little bit till you get the idle you want and then you go to the other side and you you kind of go back and forth until it's smoothly idling where you want it and you put the gauge on and you just kind of tweak them a little bit to get the ball where it's even. There's not like, oh, tune it to three or five or whatever on the gauge. It won't be that because every motor's got different vacuum, you know, coming through here. That's really all there is to it, to, to tuning these. Now this is assuming also that your jets are correct, your idle jets are correct, everything is clean, you don't have any vacuum leaks, you know, this is an ideal situation. Everything is perfect, and then you set these up, and then you go for a drive. If it's fallen on its face, then you may have to come back and, and readjust everything. Um, you'll definitely know after a few minutes of driving if it's running hot or not. You know, you go back there and check. If you can't put your face in there, it's too hot. Um, so that's it. So we'll back out again, and uh, we'll tune the ones in the bus, and uh, that's the day.
All right, well, there you go. Now you know how to tune ICTs, you know how to tune IDFs, and hopefully you sort of saw how to tune those caddies. I know it was a little tough being in the engine bay uh, trying to learn how to tune them, but, but you can see where the idle would come up and come down, you know, until we got them synced. So hopefully that was helpful to you. If it wasn't, hit me in the comments. Let me know uh, if you have any other questions about it. There's a million videos on YouTube about tuning carbs, uh, but I tried to make it easy for you guys, um, easy to see. I'll throw links down below for everything that you might need, the, the snail tool, the other tool, um, the Weber windows, if I can find a link for those, I'll put that in there too for the bug guys. Uh, make it a little easier. And the uh, manifolds for sure from CB Performance. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Again, I hope that helped you. Um, see, visit our, oh, visit our friends, uh, volksamerica.com, volksmania.com, and rattling dubs at vdubradio.com. Check out some good internet radio all day long, every single day, 24-7, 365 days of awesome music. Fantastic, don't miss it. Uh, get down to Teespring, get you a shirt. Summertime's coming, t-shirt weather. Be the cool kid on a block, at the car show, whatever, wearing one of our shirts. I've been seeing them out at the shows, and I gotta tell you guys, thank you so much for the support. Uh, it really feels good to see our, our shirts and our hoodies out at the shows. So, you guys are awesome. And, uh, Thanks for watching.